Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Washington Council for High School College Relations Virtual College Planning Day. And thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use your Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our panelists at any time. Your camera and microphone are both off, so the panelists cannot see nor hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more. And this presentation will be recorded and will be available within a week at stripescan.com backslash wash council. With that being said, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Tacoma Community College. Hi everyone, my name is Neela and let me just share my screen with you. All right, so like I mentioned, my name is Neelam and I am the K through 12 outreach and recruitment specialist here at TCC. Um, if you have any questions, utilize the chat and I will respond back to you through the chat as well. All right, so Tacoma Community College, we are located in Tacoma, Washington. Um, so we are a two year college. Um, so what that means is that majority of our programs and degrees that we offer um, take our students two years to complete. Um, there are some programs and certs that could take a little bit less or just a little bit more, but majority of the programs are done within two years. Um, so we do offer 74 associates degrees. Uh, we have 25 professional and technical certificates um, or programs. And then we also offer four bachelor of applied science degrees as well. Um, so we just wanted to make sure that we have a variety of different programs that we're offering um, since all students have different pathways of what they want to do with their educational goals. So at TCC, we do have five clusters of different programs of interest. Um, so we have arts and communication, uh, we have business, health and wellness, people in communities, and then we also have STEM programs as well. Um, so there are are some listed here on the screen, um, but our academics programs webpage on our school website does have all of our programs listed on there. Um, so everything you need to know about those programs, or if you're kind of debating between different programs, um, you can see the differences between those programs uh, by utilizing that programs finders page, um, or individuals like me can also go over different programs with you as well. Um, but those are the five different clusters that we do have. Um, so for our students at TCC, like I mentioned earlier, um, students do have different pathways of what they want to do. Um, so a lot of times students that attend TCC, they complete their first two years with us and then they would like to transfer to a university after they are done at TCC. Um, so we do have a direct transfer agreement with the public universities within our state. Um, so you can transfer up to at least 90 credits. Um, and if you want like to transfer to a private university in our state, um, then you can contact the admissions representative there to see of how many of your credits would actually transfer over um, and what the transfer process would be like. Um, so majority of our students, like I mentioned, they do transfer over. Um, so and normally when you transfer over, um, if you've completed your full two years at TCC, then you don't transfer over as a freshman student at the university, um, you will transfer over as a junior or a sophomore, depending how many credits that you have taken. Um, so that's one pathway that students will take once they leave TCC. And then we also have our career training, um, which is the professional technical programs um, and the bachelors of uh, applied science degrees as well. So some of these programs are very hands on um, and they're really setting students up to transition um, into the workforce after they graduate from our college. Uh, but some of the programs um, does allow students to transfer to a university if they like. Um, so we do have a variety of options, whether students would like to transfer or if they would like to go straight into the workforce after they graduate with us. And then for our Bachelor of Applied Science programs, um, right here I only have listed two, but we actually have four now. Um, so this is for students that maybe have completed their first two years with us and they would like to stay at our college. Um, so then they'll apply to the bachelor's program and then they'll complete their last two years in the bachelor's program as well. So those are just some of the options that we have for our students. 
So once you kind of figure out which program that you're interested in, um, your next steps would be to apply to the college. So we are an open access school. Um, we do have four quarters, so we are on the quarter system and students are able to apply for whichever quarter that they would like to start. And normally the application does not close until a week before that quarter actually starts and when you do apply within two to three business days you'll end up receiving your welcome letter which will include your student id number and next steps that you need to complete and i also have next steps listed here so first one would be just setting up your student accounts so we do have three student accounts and then funding your education so will you be utilizing financial aid scholarship funds will you be paying out of pocket um, how will you be paying for school and then we also have placement. So this is just to determine course placement for math and English to see if the student is at college level or if they're at pre-college level for math and English. And then we also have new student orientation, which is being done virtually right now. Um, so you would do that. And then those are the next steps that you would complete in the process. And then whenever open enrollment begins for the quarter you would like to start, then you would just enroll in classes. And you can also find these next steps on our admissions process page, and they will also be included on your welcome letter as well. So once you do become a student, um, there are multiple ways for students to be involved on campus. Um, so one great way is being a part of our Office of Student Engagement. Um, so this office does host multiple events and activities on campus for students. Um, there's different student body government uh, positions that are available for students, um, our student clubs and other leadership and service opportunities as well. Um, and with the clubs, I do have some of them listed here for you. Um, if you see a club that you're interested in, then you can join that club. If there's a club that you don't see and you would like to start, um, then you are able to do that as well. Um, you would just connect with the Office of Student Engagement and get that paperwork started in order to form that club. Um, so these are just some ways for students to be a part of activities on our campus. We also have athletics um, that students are a part of as well. Um, and the clubs and student body government and the Office of Student Engagement in general are just good ways of getting to know other students, staff members, and just really being a part of the campus community. And then also we have multiple different uh, student support services for our students. Um, so I just have some listed on the screen. So we have access services, counseling, um, workforce funding, veteran services, um, and all these services are listed on our school's page as well. Um, if you ever do need a support service, you can reach out to our office as well and we can kind of go over what all these support services are um, and how you can get involved in those support services. And then we also have a few tutoring centers on our campus. So we have our business education center, the math uh, center, and then we also have the writing and tutoring center. Um, so all the academic uh, centers are free for students to utilize. And I would suggest utilizing these tutoring centers, the staff members that work in there, and even the students that work in there are really great. And they're really there to make sure that you thrive in your classes and that you're successful. Um, so I would recommend checking them out um, to see what they're all about. And then just some important um, dates and pages. Um, so if you are interested in attending TCC and you will be utilizing financial aid funds, and let's say you'll be starting fall quarter, um, the deadline for financial aid is May 27th. Um, so that is coming up soon, it's in a few weeks. Um, so I would recommend that if you haven't completed that application yet and you will be coming to TCC and you do wanna utilize financial aid funds, then just make sure that you have your application for financial aid completed uh, before May 27th deadline. Um, and then like I mentioned a little earlier, we are open enrollment for all four quarters. Um, so we don't have deadlines for our applications. Um, students are able to apply for the quarter they would like to start. Um, whenever they would like, um, but it would just close a week before the quarter actually starts. But I would recommend um, applying beforehand. That way you have time to complete all your next steps and you have time to enroll in your classes as well. And then I've also included a few important pages, especially in your beginning stages. Um, so the admissions process page, our admission support page, and the programs uh, web page as well. Um, these are just some helpful pages that will kind of get you through the process. 
And then if you do have any questions at all about TCC, different programs we offer, resources, how to apply, or if you need help applying, um, or if you need help with next steps, any questions at all, um, please feel free to contact our Outreach and Recruitment Services office. So I have our email listed here. Um, it's just outreach services at tacomacc.edu, um, or you can feel free to call us um, and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you. Thank you, Neelam. Um, before we move on to our next school, I do want to remind our audience that you can use the Q&A feature to ask your questions to our panelists at any time. Uh, feel free to drop in your questions and they'll get to them as soon as they can. Um, next up, we have Whitman College. Thanks, Alvaro. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. And to kind of start off, I'll mention that Whitman is a private liberal arts school. So for those of you who aren't familiar with that structure of college, it essentially boils down to really flexible academics, getting a wide variety of subjects that you're studying until you choose your major, as well as a very small intentional community building really close relationships and having many different organizations and things you can be a part of on campus. So that's kind of the overarching foundation of what Whitman stands for. But I wanna specifically highlight a few things that I think makes Whitman quite distinct from other small schools you may find. And it starts with the rigor and the curriculum that you'll find here. Certainly rigor, Whitman is one of the more rigorous institutions in the Pacific Northwest and amongst liberal arts schools across the country. So you'd be getting a fantastic education here. But I specifically wanna call your attention to how we think about rigor in terms of students who are taking courses they're truly passionate about. I think that's really at the core of a liberal arts education. And even when you're applying to college and applying to Whitman, we want to make sure that you are taking courses you are most passionate about. And if you're stretching yourself too thin by trying to take all the APs and IB courses that are offered at your school, don't do that. Take the courses you care most about and articulate that passion to us in the application. Because ultimately, the most successful students at Whitman are those who infuse that passion into the classroom. But you're going to find students who are double majoring, creating combined majors, creating their own individually planned majors, that interdisciplinary focus is really omnipresent throughout the curriculum with combinations like geology and astronomy, environmental science and politics, uh, math and economics. You're gonna see all sorts of different combinations, even astronomy and physics into an astrophysics major, which our summer intern did last year. Uh, so you're gonna see all sorts of different options and that interdisciplinary focus is really encouraged. I'll also mention our annual academic theme that launched this year for the current academic year, it was race, violence, and health. So that was infused into all of our different courses, as well as the guest lecturer series. And we'll probably have a new academic theme discussed by faculty and community members for the coming year. Uh, but it goes to show that Whitman is thinking really outside the box in terms of what it wants the curriculum to focus on. And then I'll also wrap up on the curriculum itself by touching on the collaboration and the work you do individually with your peers and faculty. You know, every single class you have at Whitman is going to have some element of discussion and peer-led review, whether that's philosophy courses or physics and chemistry courses, you're going to have that discussion aspect because your classes are so small. You know, most juniors and seniors are in classes of 10 people or less. And the fact that 95% of our faculty live within two miles of campus goes to show that you have such close access to them, both for visiting office hours and engaging with them in the classroom on a personal basis, but also running into them at the farmer's market or for out, when you're out for brunch or at restaurants or going over to their houses for dinner at the end of the semester. You know, you're gonna have a chance to really get to know them as an individual and even do collaborative research on a level that's not possible in a lot of bigger schools. They wanna work with you. They wanna know you as human beings. You know, we're a completely undergraduate school. So you won't see any upperclassmen teaching assistants who are students leading lectures. The professors are here to work with you and hold their research off until the summer. But I also want to spend some time talking about what the community at looks, Whitman looks like and what students can do with their time. You know, there is this real focus on the resources and organizations that you have at your disposal. And a common theme amongst liberal arts schools like Whitman is the fact that you'll see 100 to 120 different student organizations active at any time. So you may choose to get highly involved in the outdoor program, in the music and arts performing scene, in the debate team, in the volunteer networks. It's all there for you. You may even choose to choose to lead the student government here at Whitman, which is a major aspect. All these different opportunities are gonna be at your disposal and whether you pursue those options in high school or there are new pathways you'd like to think about in college, it's all very easy to access. You know, I'll mention specifically with the music and arts scene, every single organization on campus is open to audition regardless of whether you're majoring or minoring or not in those art subjects. 
So the goal of the Whitman campus is to be as accessible as possible to all sorts of different groups. And I'll also mention too that as you get into your junior and senior year and many students start to live off campus, students increasingly think about that volunteer and internship network. And so it's quite common to see students who are spending just as much time as they are in the classroom as they are working in town with internships and volunteer opportunities. So that varied approach to your community and to your lifestyle is really quite present. And I'll also mention that our admission office has made great strides in diversifying the campus. You know, for a long time, Whitman's been a predominantly white institution. And just in the past four or five years, we've set new records of Hispanic and black student enrollment, um, first generation students Pell eligible from low income brackets. So we're, we certainly have a long ways to go, but that's a very distinct focus from the administration and the admission office is to make sure that we're diversifying the campus community quite a bit and really bring those relationships together. And finally, I'll speak on the location. You know, Whitman is lucky to be in this beautiful backdrop of Walla Walla in the southeast corner of Washington State. If you haven't been yet, I highly recommend taking a trip. The spring is just magnificent here. Uh, but we are on the unceded lands of the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilia Indian Reservation. And this is a group that the students have really intentionally engaged to bring into the fold in town hall meetings and different organizations to make sure that we are paying reparations to this group and involving them in the campus community so that they can have influence over how the land is used and purposed going forward. But as I mentioned before, with some of the professional development, we are so lucky to be in the backdrop of Walla Walla where students have the agriculture, tech, healthcare, education, political nonprofit sector to all engage with among other industries. And because you're only a five or 10 minute walk from the Whitman campus to downtown Walla Walla, it's so easy to go back and forth and make that professional development a huge part of your life. You may decide to be a community fellow or Whitman Consulting Corps member. Uh, you could take advantage of the Whitman Internship Grant, which gives three to five thousand dollars of funding every summer to students who secure unpaid internships and apply through that program. So, when you're thinking about small schools, I really encourage you to ask the question of different institutions: How am I getting those hard, tangible skills for the workplace at the same time that I'm getting this great academic flexibility and variety in my curriculum? And Whitman does a fantastic job of that letting students take a lot of different courses, not having to declare their major until their sophomore year before they really focus on their major and minor. So getting that academic breadth and variety to them while seeking out opportunities to volunteer, intern, and gain part-time work experiences in Walla Walla so that whether they're going to the workforce or graduate school after Whitman, they're well prepared. Finally, I'll just leave you with some final admission financial aid information. You'll see some of the deadlines that we do have on screen. Uh, and I'll also mention that early decision one and two typically have much higher admission rates than regular decision. Uh, but even amongst the liberal arts school and competitive school contingent across the country, Whitman definitely has a higher regular decision acceptance rate than a lot of other schools uh, because it's such an intentional choice to apply here. You know, you're coming for a school of 1500 students where you're making these incredible relationships with your professors and your peers. Uh, you're taking that advantage of that curricular flexibility uh, and it is quite distinct from most of the schools you'll see. I'll also mention that we've been test optional as a school for five years. So it's not a COVID reactionary measure. We look far beyond the testing and even your grades and your course rigor to really get to know you as a human being during the application review process. And I'll also mention the admission interview. Although it is optional, I highly encourage it. When you're a senior year of high school, you can set up for an interview with an admission senior intern or an admission officer like myself. And we'll have a 30 minute to an hour chat to get to know you better and give you a chance to share any extra context that you didn't get a chance to put in your application or that you're not sure whether you should include. Uh, because we really wanna to get to know you better as a human being and try to visualize how you'll succeed on campus. And finally, in terms of financial aid, you'll see the different tiers of awards we give out, but I'll summarize and say that about 75% of Whitman students actually have some sort of financial aid. So that goes to say that so few students actually pay the full cost of attendance of about $70,000. Many, many more students are getting full scholarships, need-based scholarships, huge merit academic awards. And so as you go forward through this process, you know, if you have questions about the FAFSA and CSS profile, please be in touch with us. I'm going to be putting my chat, my information in the chat here very shortly. Um, but we are here to guide you through this process and make sure that the application of financial aid is as, as accessible as possible, because plenty of Whitman students are relying on us for that support. And if you are in Washington and your family makes less than $80,000 a year, we do guarantee a full need scholarship for you. 
So with that, I'll turn it back over to the other presenters and please don't hesitate to reach out if you do have further questions about Whitman. I'm here to be a resource for you. Thanks everyone. Awesome, thank you, Henry. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to our final presenter who is Tina from uh, Western Washington University. Thanks, Alvaro. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Tina Castillo, and I'm one of the admissions counselors at Western Washington University. I am joined by my colleague, Julia Eide. She is also one of our lovely admissions counselors. She's the regional representative, so she's over in Spokane, and she will be helping with moderating the chat and answering any questions you may have during this presentation. Um, I'm going to share my contact information in the chat right now, so if you take anything away from this presentation, uh, please know that you can always contact me or Julia or any of us in the admissions office if you have any questions. So we do have a short time, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive in here to our presentation. So it's always great to start with location and where we call home. So Bellingham is in the upper corner of the Northwest state of Washington. So many of you are probably already familiar with where we are located. Maybe you haven't visited yet. Um, that's okay. We're hoping to resume our in-person tours here very soon this summer, but we do have virtual tour options available on our website if you want to check out campus before you're able to safely come and visit us. So Bellingham is a wonderful and dynamic city. It has a population of over 90,000. So while some people consider us a college town, it's definitely not a sleepy town that's kind of run by um, the events of the college, which I think is really neat because while you're on campus, you definitely have the experience of being a college student and on a university campus with all the clubs going on. But when you're in the city of Bellingham itself, it definitely attracts a lot of people who are active and into the outdoors, but also we have a really big foodie culture. So we get lots of wonderful local small businesses and restaurants. So you get to take advantage of those. We're a big brunch town. And what's neat is that downtown Bellingham is actually walking distance from our campus. It's a 15 minute walk. So we are a green and um, sustainable campus. So we don't encourage students to bring their cars. Um, definitely a very friendly walking and biking city. And we have a wonderful public transportation program to get around um, the city as well as to the airports, the Seattle airport and the Bellingham airport as well. And so Western itself, it is a university that is grounded in the liberal arts education. So no matter your major, you are going to take courses that cover the liberal arts curriculum and really be adept in things like public speaking, communication, critical thinking. You'll know about human behavior. You'll know about history. You'll know the scientific method by taking science classes, etc. And I'll talk about the majors here in just a moment. I really like to showcase these numbers that you see on this slide. We are an undergraduate focused university. And so that really leads to opportunities for our undergraduate students to work side by side with their professors and doing faculty research, presenting at conferences, being co-authors on um, academic publications. And we're also nationally recognized for sending students to, or for students being admitted to graduate programs, research programs, PhDs, et cetera and the majority of classes here taught by faculty and not graduate students. We also have about 82% of all classes that have a class size of 40 students or fewer. So we're really focused on making sure students are getting the best academic experience as possible while lending lots of opportunities outside of the classroom to really transform their education through hands-on um, activities like that undergraduate research I shared. A lot of our students also go on to study abroad. So there is pretty much a study abroad program for any major of your choosing. A lot of our students go abroad with a Western faculty member, or maybe they do a direct exchange. We have direct exchange programs in London and many throughout Japan because we have a sister school there. So lots of opportunities to engage, to engage in that way. So with Western, we offer 175 different academic programs to choose from. And we organize these programs through our seven different colleges. We started as a teaching college, so our Woodring College remains a very popular program for our students who want to be future educators. 
We also have one of the oldest environmental colleges in the country with our Huxley College of the Environment. So if you're passionate about the environment, about conservation, sustainability, definitely a great college to check out. We even have our uh, marine and coastal studies program there that is very popular. So if you're into marine science, marine biology, um, and studying those, definitely an opportunity to really engage and do research there. Business and economics is very popular. That's one of our standout programs. And our STEM programs are constantly growing. We're getting new buildings that are adding more labs for our biology and chemistry programs. And our industrial design is an award-winning program. Students there are studying um, the recycling potential of plastics that are found in the ocean to be able to recycle those um, in more uh, in sustainable ways. Um, other research that's noted at Western Psychology, it's a Bachelor's of Science, so we have many psychology labs studying the neurobiology of food, food and sugar addiction. Um, we have a faculty member that's studying Huntington's disease. Um, our kinesiology and exercise science labs are also very popular. And I don't want to leave out um, our College of Fine and Performing Arts. Our theater program has been nationally recognized as a top 10 program in the country by the Onstage Theater blog. And we also have really talented musicians and dancers through those programs as well. Any questions on that, you're welcome to connect with us. You can also explore more of the majors online um, that my colleague is linking in the chat here. So Western with a total enrollment population of 16,000 students, it's a pretty large size university and each incoming class is just around 3000 students. So we definitely wanna make sure you get connected with students, with your peers, not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom, having fun and really finding your community. That's really gonna help build resiliency um, and, and keep you happy and ultimately successful at Western. So we have over 250 student clubs. We don't have a Greek life on our campus, so you won't find those, but our clubs really cover any and all activity identity-based um, type club or organization, and even academic clubs for your major. Athletics are very popular. Study abroad, I had mentioned. We also have our Lakewood Boathouse where there's a boathouse on beautiful Lake Whatcom where you can rent out sailboats, paddle boards, kayaks, canoes. We are a really big outdoors school. If you're new to the outdoors, that's okay. Our outdoor center hosts different clinics, both day clinics and overnight clinics to teach you new skills like backpacking, sailing, um, uh, and bicycling as well. We wanna make sure our students are healthy and safe. So our counseling center helps support our students. We have our wellness center that puts on different like organizational skills, stress management, things like that. And of course, our career services and academic advising center really helps students in maybe finding a job as a student employee or a job after graduation. And of course, with academic advising, making sure our students feel supported and on track to graduate, maybe even additional support if they need help finding their academic major. Segwaying into the application right now, we have our own application you, that is found on our website. Um, it does require a $60 application fee, but we do have need-based application waivers available, so don't hesitate to use that. In your online application, you'll self-report your current academic schedule and your future schedule, but we'll also ask you to submit a personal statement essay. For freshmen, we do give you a topic of your choice. We will ask for a resume of activities list. Test scores are optional, so if you do have a test score you want to submit, we will review it as part of your admission, but it is not required. We do have a tell us more essay to address anything else outside the application, so feel free to use that. And then recommendation, letters of recommendation are also optional as well. Pay attention to deadlines. Our regular decision deadline is January 31st. For Washington residents, we have one of the lowest um, costs of tuition within the state of Washington. We're very proud of making sure that Western is affordable for our Washington residents. When you apply for admission, we will review you for admission scholarships. Most of those are based on academic merit, so your GPA and test scores, but we also have different distinguished scholars programs specific to majors, and of course, our multicultural achievement program scholarship for students involved in activities related to diversity and multiculturalism. And last but not least, please feel free to contact us. We put our confirmation in the chat, but we're always available to take your questions. We do have one-on-one -on -one, uh, video appointments available where you can sign up to speak with one of our admissions counselors. We also have live 
uh, virtual campus tours and different information sessions available um, throughout the week. So don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you have any questions at all. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Tina. Well, um, we are actually approaching the end of our session, but we're gonna switch gears and go into a quick Q&A session. So if I can invite back all of our panelists um, so that we can address the question in front, and sorry, I am setting myself up. So one second. Awesome, there we go. Um, so the first question is gonna be for Tacoma Community College. And the question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, um, so my advice would really just be do your research. Um, if you are interested in multiple different schools, kind of figuring out um, what are the different programs that are offered um, and kind of comparing the programs as well. Um, and then just reaching out to an admission specialist as well to kind of have someone there to help you along with the process. Um, and I would say another important thing is actually going and visiting the campuses. I know right now with COVID, some campuses might not allow students to come visit, um, but you can see if there's a virtual visit or if they allow you to. That way you can see the campus yourself and kind of see, is this campus the best fit for me? And just kind of explore your options. Awesome. Thank you, Neelam. Um, Henry, do you want to add anything to that? Yep, I would just say there is nothing too trivial to include on your application, um, whether it's practicing Duolingo or it's the commute you had to take to school. Um, give us as much context as possible. Use every single writing space that you can, even the additional information section, the community disruption question for COVID. Uh, we want to know it all. And the more information we have, the more fairly we can evaluate your application. Uh, so include it all and ask us for help. Ask us what's important to include and we'll be able to help guide you through that. That's great advice, Henry. I haven't heard that before, but I, I definitely agree with it. Um, Tina, is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I want to echo my colleagues and um, also just uh, connecting with current students. A lot of the admissions offices have current student employees. So chatting with them and just kind of hearing their stories about why they chose their college is a great resource. Absolutely. Thank you, Tina. Um, our next question is going to be a little bit more about uh, what campus life is like. Um, so we'll go in the same order. If I can welcome back to Coma Community College and ask, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Yeah, so for me, um, my favorite event would be um, our Welcome Week, uh, which is at the beginning of the quarter. Um, so our Office of Student Engagement, they are the ones that host Welcome Week. So there's just a bunch of different activities that are going around campus. Um, they're providing free food. Um, and then also also swag. Um, and it's just a nice way for new students to meet other students and to meet staff members um, and even for staff to meet students that are coming on our campus. It's just a really nice way to build community that first few days of the quarter starting. There's a really fun event at Whitman, I would say, in the, in the specifically in the arts and theater scene, where for a week it's called the Instant Play Festival. Students will create their own theater scripts about 10 to 15 minutes long and recruit their friends, even staff and faculty to participate. And then over one weekend, all the different performances and theater works are run through um, in our amphitheater. So an example of a really easy way to engage with the music scene without having to be in a semester long or year long orchestra, choir, et cetera. I love the info fair at Western um, when, when it's nice out all of the um, student clubs 250 of them um, come out and table at uh, Red Square around the fountain and it's just fun. A lot of them give out swag. There's a lot of free food, free pizza. It's just fun to get involved. Awesome. Thank you, folks. So we do have time for our last question. So I'm going to go ahead and move along. Um, and our question is give an interesting fun fact about the school, about your school. Sorry. And Neil, we can start with you. Yeah, um, so I do like the fact that our school, we do have um, a little mini rock garden. Um, we do have a daycare on campus. Um, so some of the littles, as we call them, will kind of paint different rocks. And then we've had other individuals just around campus writing cute notes on rocks, just painting on them. Um, and it's nice because if you're kind of like having a bad day or you're stressed out about a test or something and you pick up a rock and it has like a really nice and motivating little like message on there, um, then it kind Kind of does like make your day a little better so i think that's kind of something cute that you can find around our campus 
One fact I recently just learned about Whitman is we actually have the third most land of any group in Washington. And it extends actually in a lot of uh, areas, even past the Tri-Cities towards the Columbia River um, to outsource our energy, our farming, our agriculture to work with the town as well. Uh, so that really helps students get outside of the classroom for experiential learning and also to work with a lot of the different organizations on a Whitman owned basis um, and giving a lot more opportunities there for you know, innovative thinking. Uh, so that's something I'm pretty excited about. Um, we have been, Western's campus has been collecting outdoor sculptures since 1960, and now we have 36 outdoor sculptures. Um, so that's really neat. They're all interactive, so you can touch them and, and, and look at them. So that's fun. Awesome. Thank you, Tina. Well, folks, um, that actually wraps up our session. So first of all, thank you so much to our panelists uh, for being here, for sharing all the fantastic things about their school, um, and also to our audience for, for uh, joining us for the last 35 minutes to learn a little bit more about these uh, institutions. Um, once you close this window, there's going to be a very quick four-question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide for us. Um, there is more sessions to be offered, but I will say this will be the last block of our session, so um, don't miss out on it. Um, and in about a week, you'll find this same recording at stripescan.com backslash wash council. Um, and thank you so much, everybody, and have a great day.